The chance for tropical development continues to grow in our area in less than a week's time. Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Friends, welcome back to Media Mundo, where you're home for Caribbean weather. Rusty with you here. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Coming up in this video, have a tropical wave moving across the Caribbean right now. We'll talk about the areas of heavy rain and storms and gusty winds it's bringing to our area as we speak. We'll talk about the island by island forecast as we get closer to the weekend, and then we'll deep dive into the tropics. Still monitoring, still really closely looking at the models and the potential for tropical development in our area in less than a week. We'll get into all of that. As always, I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section below where you're viewing from, what the weather has been like. Broke out the fall colors for today, but there is a double meaning. My favorite National Football League team are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here in Florida. It is creamsicle week. They have their old school uniforms they're breaking out, the creamsicle orange color. So wanted to put on a little bit of that for them as well. Hey, let's get started. We'll get going with what's happening right now in the Eastern Caribbean. Again, uh, first things first, let me just show you the overall surface analysis, okay? We still have very breezy conditions, very gusty conditions up in the Bermuda area as the remnants of Oscar continues to pull away from there. So it's drying out in Bermuda, but they're still having some 35, 40 mile an hour wind gusts from time to time. One tropical wave here kind of moving into the central Caribbean. The north axis of that is right over the Moda Passage between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. It's really caused some kicked up seas, some gusty winds and some heavy rain and storms. We'll look at that. And another tropical wave is on the doorstep of the Lesser Antilles. This will continue to provide the Eastern Caribbean with some unsettled weather over the next couple of days. You can see that, the, again, the moisture associated with this next tropical wave is well off to the south and to the east. This is in what we call the intertropical convergence zone. This time of the year, as we eat towards the end of October and into early November, it's harder to get waves coming off the West African coast to develop tropically here in what we call the main development region of the Atlantic because there's a lot drier air beginning to nudge in from the north. It can still happen, but we're kind of closing that window of time. That being said, we can still get elongated areas of showers and storms that don't develop tropically, but bring in gusty winds and heavy rainfall. We already had one move across the area yesterday, and here comes another one. Look at what's happening right now down in Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago has picked up the wind gust here in just the last couple of hours of 36 miles an hour. Port of Spain has had some gusty winds, some heavy rainfall, some lightning, and the opportunity for some isolated flooding in these areas. So keep that in mind for both Trinidad and Tobago as we go through the rest of this Thursday. The moisture is actually continuing to build in. So rain chances will actually still be fairly high late this afternoon through the evening hours and just another wet forecast for Friday as well. Some of this is going to try and move through places like Suriname, Guyana, Venezuela, up towards Nueva Esparta. It's a little bit spottier right now for Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Barbados. This is the visible satellite imagery. We'll still have some passing showers. We'll still have some gusty winds and swells are picking up from time to time as well. This is a loop of the visible satellite over the last six hours. These clouds are racing from east to west. There is a surge of wind here at the surface. And again, it's bringing very gusty conditions to portions of the Lesser Antilles. It's also bringing from time to time the opportunity for some quick passing showers. And again, that opportunity will be there on this Thursday for places like Martinique and Dominica and Guadeloupe and all the way up into the Leeward Islands as well. Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Eustatia, Saba, St. Bart's. And again, from time to time, winds of 20 to 25 miles an hour. Had a beautiful shot sent in from John O'Sitton. This is yesterday in Montserrat. Love this. You can see the clouds just kind of lifting up with some of the topography features there of the island and then just kind of spraying off there with those fast winds racing at the surface. Beautiful shot there. Appreciate Jono sending in that photo from Montserrat yesterday. We have about the same situation here. And again, from time to time, we've actually had a, a funnel cloud reported in these areas as well. So just keep that in mind for the boaters. And obviously some swells coming in with some of these uh, stronger winds. 
for our friends in the U.S. and British Virgin Islands for today. Back over to the enhanced satellite imagery. The axis of the tropical wave is basically over the western side of Puerto Rico. It's beginning to dry out the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, where they had some decent rainfall late last night and through the overnight hours. We're beginning to quiet down a bit through Puerto Rico, but we are seeing a few showers and storms crop up at the hour. So what do you say we take a live look of that right now from the radar out of Puerto Rico? Throw that on for you real quickly here. And you can see the Arecibo area at the hour getting some showers there. These are going to try and move off towards the west. We'll continue to see them develop in the central portion of the island and then work their way off towards the west. Uh, Aguadilla with an opportunity as well. Anywhere on the northwest side of the island, we'll have a, a chance for a few showers. Isabella as well, maybe even down towards Mayaguez. But generally speaking, a lot of this heavier rain is now pushing off towards the west and getting into the far western sides of the Dominican Republic. So we'll switch back over to the enhanced satellite imagery here and you can see that axis of tropical moisture now firmly over the Dominican Republic in Haiti. So Punta Cana, Santo Domingo, Semana, La Romana, Santiago de los Cabreros, showers and storms beginning to build up towards the Puerto Plata area as well. These are hefty. They can produce some locally heavy rainfall. Watch out for some quick flash flooding in a couple of spots, maybe 25 to 75 millimeters or one to three inches of rain and even higher in a couple of choice locations. Again, higher terrain that can lead to some quick flooding, so keep that in mind. This will continue to track west through Haiti the remainder of this Thursday overnight and even into Friday. So places like Port-au-Prince and Lakai will continue to see a better opportunity for showers and storms developing there. Eventually, we'll get some of that rain to come back over to our friends in Jamaica. We're seeing a couple of showers develop at the hour on the western side of the island, even a little bit of lightning. You see the live lightning count here at Media Mundo. So Sav Lamar back towards Treasure Beach, Black River, Santa Cruz, Cambridge area, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland parishes, southern sides of St. James, maybe Trelawney, southern sides of Hanover as well. Still the opportunity to see a shower or storm develop across the eastern side of the island and work its way in. If nothing else, they are just north of the Kingston area. We've had at least some cloud covers develop, but you know, it's gonna be scattered here. If I throw on the water vapor imagery, we're still entrenched in some relatively dry air. So the rain here is gonna be localized in nature. Whereas you can see the elongated axis of this tropical wave is bringing in the heftier rain to the Dominican Republic and Haiti at the hour. This will try and get into Cuba, maybe as far north as the Turks, the Caicos, and eventually Jamaica as well. It's not gonna be as prominent when it gets as far west as Jamaica, but we'll see the opportunity for some showers and storms. It's been an absolutely lovely day again through the uh, Bahamas, promise you the satellite is running right now, but nary hardly a cloud in the sky. Few thin high wispy clouds here on the visible satellite imagery. You can see those coming down. Still a breezy day in Florida, but no big wind gusts here. Things have been quiet. Same thing for Cuba as well. The opportunity for a few showers and storms to develop late on this Thursday afternoon, especially towards the western side of the island. Neat little feature here just south of Grand Cayman, trying to spin in a little bit of cloud coverage towards Grand Cayman. Could it promote a passing shower, it's possible. But again, the air right now in the western side of the Caribbean is relatively dry. You get back over towards, and let me switch back over to the enhanced uh, satellite imagery here. You get back over towards Belize and Guatemala and Quintana Roo, we're not going to see a lot of rain, but is there an opportunity for a quick passing shower? It's possible. And you can see when I switch over to the visible satellite imagery, there's actually more cloud coverage here than you would see on in the infrared. So from Chechmol, San Pedro, Belize City, Dangriga, on over towards Punta Cana, uh, excuse me, Punta Gorda, northern side of Honduras as well, San Pedro Sula, then the coastal islands, Roatan, Guanaja as well. Speaking of Guanaja, I got this photo in from Kayleen. This was from yesterday, but you can see that kind of thicker cloud cover and moisture laden air. Few passing showers here or there. Some of it could be on the heavier side, but more than anything, just kind of a grayer overcast rather than a lot of hefty rainfall in that area. Appreciate Kayleen sending me that one in. Let me go back before we do that real quickly here. I didn't want to forget my friends in the ABC Islands. And the big story for the ABC Islands is going to be the wind, and I mentioned this in the last couple of videos, these winds are gonna be howling in this part of the Caribbean over the next few days. It'll promote a couple of quick passing showers. Curacao, 26 mile an hour wind. Aruba, 32 mile an hour wind. Okay, didn't wanna mess you guys up there with the forecast. Let's get into it, guys. Thanks for taking a quick second, liking this video. I lost my pocket square. Hang on. I mean, if I'm gonna break out a pocket square, I gotta get it to be shown, right? 
I'm going to put it really high and eventually it'll fall back down. Thanks for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to Media Mundo. Thank you for sharing this with your family and friends. And again, appreciate you guys finding ways to support me here at the channel. Thank you for all the kind comments as well. Really appreciate that. And again, thank you for helping this channel grow. We need to keep growing to provide you these daily updates. So liking and subscribing is absolutely the easiest way to help the channel do that. Now we're gonna get into the island by island forecast over the next couple of days. So first things first, we'll switch over to, uh, we'll do the rain first, then we'll look at the winds. We're going to continue to see some pretty active weather with that tropical wave working its way from east to west. Now it's not gonna develop tropically, not expecting any tropical development through our entire area through the weekend ahead. Doesn't mean we're not gonna have some hefty showers and storms in some spots. And you can clearly see this tropical wave as it progresses west. It runs into our Central American gyre. Again, this is that broad area of spin this time of the year over the Central American area, which will eventually try and spin up the tropical development we'll be talking about next week. But in the shorter term, it's going to bring heftier rain back over to the western side of the Caribbean and the tropical moisture feeding in from that wave will enhance that opportunity. So now things start to get wet again. We'll start off with our friends in Jamaica. And again, it's still not gonna be the highest of rain chances, but I promise you starting tomorrow on your Friday, Saturday and then Sunday, rain chances will be higher than what you've had most of the week. Pots, pockets of heavier downpours. Some of this, like we've seen during the week, by the way, will occur during the evening and overnight hours. There is an opportunity that you get your heaviest rain sometime during the dark hours rather than during the afternoon. So keep that in mind for Kingston, Portmore, Spanish Town, Linstead, Montego Bay, Negril, Savlamar. If you're doing some boating, we'll have a little bit of a churned up sea out there, especially on the southern coastline. So just to keep an eye out for that for any fishermen or anyone going to be going offshore. Cayman Islands will also start to see better rain chances. Little Cayman, Cayman Brack, Grand Cayman, especially as we get into Sunday. And although the moisture is feeding in from east to west, really we'll start to see this expanse, this big old spin, just kind of expand in size as we get into Saturday and Sunday. So that's why the rain chances really start to improve for Grand Cayman, even the western sides of Cuba, Quintana Roo, Merida, Cancun, Cozumel, Campeche, Chechmal, Tulum, back down towards Belize City, inland as well, San Ignacio, Roatan, Tegucigalpa, on over towards southern sides of Nicaragua, and you can see it just getting going, San Jose, Panama City. So we're gonna get good high rainfall totals here, the opportunity for some flooding. Again, it's very localized, hard to pinpoint, but we'll have several inches of rain or more than 100 millimeters in some areas just over the next three to four days. The opportunity for some hefty rain, and again, down the road, we start looking in the Southwest Caribbean for where that spin might try and be developing. Uh, Cuba, again, scattered showers and storms here, slightly higher chance for some rain in the next couple of days for the Northwest, Central and Southeast Bahamas. Look, it's not gonna be a lot. If you wanna be outside, you can enjoy it. We might have some quick passing showers coming in still with the north wind for Freeport and Nassau on over towards the Acklands. Turks and Caicos could again catch a little bit of the moisture associated with a tropical wave tonight and tomorrow, but it's just more scattered in nature overall there. Expecting rain chances to stay relatively high for the Dominican Republic and Haiti the next couple of days, 50 to a 60% chance each afternoon. Once again, they'll be, you know, widely scattered to begin with and just be more numerous in nature into the afternoon hours. Watch out for some heavier rain and the lightning as well. Puerto Rico, U.S. and British Virgin Islands will dry out a touch, okay? Still expecting decent rain chances for tomorrow. If I pause this here and we get into our Friday, you'll see some passing showers here as we move through the day. Then Saturday the 26th, again, still an opportunity Right in the afternoon hours there, central western sides of the island, Sunday's a little bit more spotty. That's what I would expect. I would expect a rain chance overall for St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, Roadtown, Anagata, San Juan, Fajardo, Ponce, all to just slowly fall as we go through the weekend. But still, you know, even on Sunday, it's a 40 to a 50% chance. Okay, next tropical wave moving into the Lesser Antilles. Again, we don't really see anything crazy concentrated. I would expect there to be a better chance for rain down towards Trinidad and Tobago overall compared to areas to the north, but Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Bart, St. Martin, Saba, St. Eustatius, 
Montserrat, all with decent chances here the next several days. Again, sea conditions will still be relatively elevated. From time to time, we'll have some hazardous sea conditions, so Mariners, please keep that in mind. Same thing for Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Grenada as well. Let's take a look actually real quickly here. I'm going to start off with the GFS rainfall totals, then we'll look at the European. And this is just over the next five days, by the way. The European will go out seven days. But just kind of for planning purposes, just notice that over just the next five days, look at the heavy rain the GFS developing along the Caribbean coastline of both Quintana Roo and all of Central America. And I am talking about here when we query these numbers, really hefty rainfall totals, five, six, seven, eight inches of rain along the immediate coast, but even San Jose has some heavier rain. You can clearly see again, you get up towards Nicaragua and Honduras along the coast, four or five inches, certainly not as much far inland like Managua and, Te and Tegucigalpa. And then you get back towards coastal Belize. There you go, four inches of rain near Belize City, not as much for San Ignacio inland. Dangriga, four inches of rain. Roatan, Guanaja, again, an inch and a half too. So solid rain and still some secondary flooding going on in Belize places uh, like the Belize River, still even some urban flooding happening post Nadine. So we don't need to see more rain here, but we're gonna get it. Generally speaking, the farther north that you go, I would expect the rain chances and the overall amount of rain to tail off a bit. Again, the Cayman Islands could be in store for some good rain here. We've got three and a half inches in Grand Cayman, not as much for Little Cayman and Cayman Brack. Generally speaking, the farther west that you go, the higher the opportunity. Jamaica, Again, maybe the Lucy area, Negril could get a couple of inches here, but you notice that the entire island should get some downpours over the next few days. You guys let me know in the comments section below how you guys are hanging out in Jamaica. Hope you guys are doing well. Obviously, you've also had some warm weather when it has been raining. Look at that, the eastern sides of Cuba could ping up to over a half foot of rain. That's 150 millimeters or higher. Again, not expecting a lot of rain over the Bahamas. There are some spots of very heavy rain as a possibility over both Haiti and the Dominican Republic, isolated heavier rain over Puerto Rico and the US and British Virgin Islands, again, 50, 75 millimeters in a couple of areas, and then lesser amounts overall through the Lesser Antilles, huh, how about that, that works out, and then about one to two, maybe slightly higher for Trinidad and Tobago. That's the GFS model. Here is the European model. And again, you can see basically starting Sunday, and then you snap the finger, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, look at these numbers really blow up very high. It's the same situation. The GFS basic, or excuse me, the European model basically activates the Central American gyre. It expands in nature. We start to get an opportunity for a developing tropical system here in the Southwest Caribbean, which just expands this moisture field out. So again, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, DR, Turks and Caicos, even Turks and Caicos has some very heavy rainfall totals on this. And again, if I take myself off camera, you look at the bottom of your screen, the highest number that you see is 19 inches of rain. I don't want to see that in Central America, but let's just say that, you know, six plus is possible, 150 millimeters plus as possible in these areas over the next seven days. And I'll be monitoring it. Potentially it gets even more than that. Boaters get ready. All right. Post Oscar, we had 35, 40 mile an hour winds up in Bermuda. Those should begin to relax throughout the day. We're still going to, as we get into next week, this is the top of the inside of the screen, Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday, look at all of these fresh winds and waves build through the Bahamas, Straits of Florida, portions of the Gulf of Mexico, central and the western sides of the Caribbean. And of course, we've had this north wind from time to time here in the Lesser Antilles, which have also kicked up some swells. But obviously, the surface winds have been a little bit more out of the east lately, and that has thrown through some very heavy winds and waves right on through the ABC Islands as well. Again, certainly the opportunity here where we're going to see some gusts over 30 and 35 miles an hour. It's a very churned up time of the year with the jet stream that falls deep into the southeast United States from time to time, and that can aid in kicking some things up as well. All right, now we're gonna get into the tropics. The first thing I wanna look at, if I go over here, excuse me one second. The computer did not like me doing that, but that's okay. Just take two seconds to load it back up. The first thing I wanna look at actually is going to be the wind gusts over the next couple of days because i think that that's just kind of something that i want to reiterate and make sure you guys are aware of that even before we start talking about tropics the winds are going to be a story so these are going to be your wind gusts anywhere that you see green 
is relatively high wind speeds. That's 20 to 25 miles an hour here in gusts. And that encompasses a darn lot of the central and western Caribbean portions of the Straits of Florida into the Western Atlantic, the Southeast Gulf of Mexico, but you can even see these fresh winds just here, especially through the Windward Islands. So as I've mentioned, for the next few days, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, 30, 35 mile an hour wind gusts from time to time. If I just pause this here, and we go back and we just look at a couple of these areas. Again, there's your wind gusts, 30, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour. So those greens get you into the high 30s, assume the high 20s, and then the yellows get you past 30, but there's just a lot of areas here that are gonna have very wind-driven showers, just a very windy forecast overall, all right? So keep that in mind for boaters. Now we're gonna get into the overall tropics. Again, we take a measured approach here at Midi Mundo, that's what I like to do. That being said, we have to start talking a little bit more now about the possibility of what might be down the road, and not as long down the road as you might think. We're not talking about 10 days from now. We're talking about the opportunity that we could have a potentially developing system here in just the next six or seven days, okay? So I'm gonna let the GFS model deterministic load up. That's what you see on the screen. Again, we are now six days in a row where both the GFS and the European model, the two main global models, are painting on tropical development in the near same locations at around the same time frame. So there's model consensus now for nearly a week of this opportunity. And that would be starting about six to seven days from now. So we need to get a little bit more, you know, concentrated in our discussion with this. Again, as we go through the next few days, the Central American Gyre gets just a little bit more prominent. On the eastern side of that, just where we saw Helene in Nadine form, as we get into Wednesday, the 30th, the GFS starts to develop a broad area of circulation here in the Southwest Caribbean, all right? We'll start to see as we get into the 31st, which is a week from now, so just seven days from now, it begins to spin up this storm somewhere near Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Haiti, Cuba. I, again, I don't wanna pinpoint and say, my goodness, this storm is going to impact this area. We are still a week out at least, okay? But we've been fairly consistent in seeing this try and spin up in these areas, okay? So if you just live in the Central and Western Caribbean, this is the biggest point I wanna get across. Just make sure that you're checking in daily, okay? I'm gonna keep you updated here at Media Mundo, but you can clearly see that spin right there on the Eastern side of the Central American Gyre here from the GFS model. And yes, this model run would take it very close to Jamaica and Haiti and Cuba and the Cayman Islands. And yes, it's been showing that solution over the last couple of days as well. We still don't want to pinpoint any one location. These models can and will change, but I will say they've been relatively consistent. And again, the time frame would be about a week from now. About a week from now. Let's go ahead and look at the winds. I, I've yet to show you this, again, as a measured approach. Look, we don't, I don't wish cast, okay? I don't hope for something to happen, and I don't try and wish something away. We empirically look at the data, we talk about what's happening here, and I give you my two cents when, we, when it comes to this. When we look at the GFS model, it's gonna be very similar to the European, by the way. It starts to kind of pick up on this development area here right around the 28th, maybe the 29th, and then really tries to wrap it up beginning on the 30th, which is just six days away from now, and pulls it generally north. That could certainly be north and west, that could be due north, that could be even a little bit on the north and east side. There's a big spread still in the models when it comes to movement of this, but it does look like this area is gonna be the one primed for potential development down the road. Now, again, as we get into the 30th and 31st, you can see that that low level center of circulation really tightens up, okay? Again, it doesn't mean it's gonna be here. It could be over here, it could be up here, could be over here, but development and developing into a tropical storm or more looks to be more and more on the table, okay? That's again what I wanna pass along. And you can just see again it gaining latitude and going north through the Western Caribbean. If we look at the GFS ensemble members, so I showed you the deterministic, these are the 51 different ensemble members. And you'll see what I'm talking about where we still have the spread. Again, as we get into Monday the 28th, and then Tuesday the 29th, that's when we first see the, the first signs. But it's really about the 30th next Wednesday that we see the ensemble members pick up on this potential development area and begin to expand it 
and make it stronger the 31st and into the 1st. So next Thursday into next Friday, okay? And again, this would be the same system, but you can see the spread in the models. Some of them are near the Turks of the Caicos. Some are south of Jamaica, close to Cuba. Maybe riding up the east coast of Florida would be dependent on speed, obviously. A slower system might have a little bit more time to develop in the Caribbean where conditions are much more favorable. It's a little bit more hostile. The wind field's gonna be a little bit more hostile here in the Western Atlantic and the Gulf, and we'll talk about that down the road as well. But a slower developing system in the Caribbean, that's the area primed for potential development. These are the European ensemble members pinpointing areas of potential low pressure next Wednesday. So just six days from now. If you see these red numbers, that's the last two digits of the low pressure in millibars. So the 06 would be 1,006 millibar low pressure area. That would be basically a depression or a weak tropical storm. But there are plenty of the ensemble members that are developing this here in the same location as the GFS does. I wanted to show you that snapshot so you understand that the European model, most of them tried to develop this again Wednesday, six days out. If we look at the full run of the European model ensemble, as we get into Wednesday, you'll start to see those crop up nearly the same area as the GFS. Pause it again. This would be Saturday, uh, about nine days from now. And we still have a tight cluster relative to what we had yesterday and relative to what the GFS had. Central, western sides of the Caribbean, a few outliers around that, okay? Again, six days in a row now where both main global models are showing development in this area. Sure, it doesn't have to happen, right? But we need to start focusing more on that opportunity uh, for what could be happening in this area here in about a week from now. You know, I'll keep you guys updated. There's no reason to make any plans whatsoever. Uh, you know, we still have some time, but you guys hopefully have a good heads up to what might be going on here when we get into next week. So looking at the tropical outlook overall, the tropical wave that we've been monitoring will just continue to progress through the Caribbean. It's the one that's impacting the Dominican Republic right now. That's going to bring heavy rain and gusty winds. It's not going to develop tropically, but there will be some impacts. So no development is expected tropically through Sunday. However, next week, again, the models continue to show tropical development about six to seven days out, really cranked up in that seven to eight to nine day time frame. All right. And that's the big story for the next week ahead. Friends, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for finding us across all of our social media platforms. We really had good growth across other areas, especially TikTok, we're Media Mundo there. Instagram, my Media Mundo, uh, X at Media Mundo, Facebook page as well. If you want to send me a picture or video like Jono and Kayleen did today, it's mymediamundo at gmail.com. Look, even if it's beautiful weather, a gorgeous sunset, gorgeous sunrise, would love to show it to you guys here. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you have a specific question about the forecast, you can drop in the comment section below. While you're down there, thank you for liking and subscribing. Friends, you have a great rest of your Thursday. I've got you covered here. I'll be back tomorrow with all the latest for you right here at Media Mundo.